Uh, in a sense, this, uh, this will fit seamlessly on with what we've done today. Uh, I think particularly that cosmic, cosmic view of the gospel, personal view of the gospel stuff. Do you remember that hours ago Neil did at the beginning? We're, we're going to be landing kind of there. Um, we're definitely going to be in contextualization, definitely following on the holistic uh, approach to the gospel. So in a sense, it's seamless. In another sense, this is going to be a massive left turn, just so you're aware of that, because we're going to think about art for the next 20 minutes or so and hopefully get some... I, I want to prod you and provoke you a little. Uh, we're not on the, the realm of kind of theological soundness here. We're on the realm of some ideas from experience uh, and, some, and just how this has worked for me and observations I've made and hopefully grounded in Scripture as we go along. And so feel free to disagree, please, vocally. I, I don't mind. That's, that's absolutely fine. Um, just a bit about me. I, um, my name's Johnny. As Jonathan said, I'm on the eldership team at Church Central. Uh, two strands have kind of gone through my life pretty consistently, uh, and one would be evangelism. Uh, after university, came on uh, the staff of the church, a kind of intern, I suppose that's the kind of name of the role, um, and quickly drew myself towards evangelistic stuff, knocking on doors, preaching in the streets, alpha courses, by any means necessary, the gospel, getting out there, that sort of stuff. That strand was there. The other strand was kind of art, although I wouldn't have called it that. I, I'm, I'm a rapper, is how I, I was always into rap music as a kid. Uh, I was in a number of bands. We, we were in a band after university, which did all right yeah, in our own little way. Um, my wife's a photographer and an illustrator, and those two streams just went together as we went along. Um, and so it's kind of, a, as a combination of those things, uh, a few years ago, me and my wife started a network of Christian artists called Sputnik. And um, so that's kind of where I'm coming from, where some of my experience will be drawn from, I think. Uh, just so you know, on the um, notes, it looks like just Jonathan's reading resources are just incredibly random at the end. But I don't have any notes. I've just got some resources because we don't have time to really deal with this. I just want to start a conversation. If you're interested in it, there's resources there. Some of them will be from our website. And please feel free to have a look at that. I'm not going to talk about that uh, much unless you want to uh, later. I want to start with an example uh, then. I want to know your opinion of this. And in a minute, we'll find out that in one way or another. I've got a friend, and he's a, a visual artist, a painter, a illustrator, and conceptual artist, which, for those of you who are not familiar with art, is weird art. Okay, he's into that stuff. And I talked to his church leader um, a while ago, and his church leader was, was gushing at how valuable my friend was to him in his church, and how great it was to have an artist in the church. And he said to me, it's so good, I want to involve him. I've got this idea for a project that I'd like him to do that I think is going to be right up his street. And I, I don't know, he can work out how to do it, but I know exactly what he needs to do. And he explained it like this. He said, I would like it, him to put on an exhibition in our church building so that if someone comes in and they have never heard of Christianity, they will go through the exhibition and come out the end and they will know the full gospel. Okay? Someone comes in, they know nothing about Christianity, they go through the exhibition, they, can't, they know the full gospel. You have 30 seconds in your groups, which should be small. Terrible idea, okay idea, or good idea? Off you go. Off you go. What do you think? Gut feeling. There's no, no right or wrong here. Honest. <laughs> okay, another 10 seconds. Just kind of lubricate the cogs of your mind. That's all we're doing. Okay, we'll do the system like this. Uh, we're going to do it like the gladiator arenas uh, in the old days. Uh, so you're not too, it's not too exposing. Terrible ideas like that. Okay ideas like that. Great ideas like that. Okay, let's see. Just, no one else will be able to see except for me. Okay, so some of you died. Okay, right. That is very interesting. Good. Okay. I can just about imagine a way that such approach would not be detrimental to Christianity, but I'm going for this, and I, I'm being, I'm being going to be provocative to you, because I know there was a lot of thumbs up, and as I said, I, I can imagine that working, I can imagine that, that having been worthwhile in some ways, but I think on the whole, what lies behind that sort of approach, as a, as a front foot approach to artists in our churches, well, not, not what lies behind, let's come to that in a minute, the effect of that is not going to be helpful on most of our artists. So although we're going to be thinking about the arts generally, where this lands for us is there are artists in our churches, people who work in the arts. I'm not just talking about painters, but I'm talking about the arts, dancers, filmmakers, actors, etc., writers, etc., etc. Um, and there will be others who will come through the door. One of the reasons Sputnik exists is not just to encourage artists, but is to heal the divide that exists between churches and artists. 
um, because there is a divide in, on both sides in some ways. And so I want to explain why, because I think, this is a, is a, um, for me, uh, there is a thinking behind that that I think is just misunderstands art slightly. And the thinking is that the importance of art is mainly that it can communicate a message. I think that's the thing behind that. The importance of art is mainly that it can communicate a message. Now, art does communicate a message. If, if done right, if the artist is right, he should communicate some thoughts from here into the mind of the audience. He, that should happen, or she. Uh, but, what, but I'm just going to simply say, I think art does communicate two other things. Art is, in many ways, about communication. Um, it communicates a message, but it also communicates two other things. And unless we're aware of these two other things, we can cause some problems... Uh, that we don't foresee, I think, sometimes. Okay? So art does communicate a message, but it doesn't just do that, I don't think. It also, and art communicates an artist's wisdom or lack of wisdom. Art communicates an artist's wisdom or lack of wisdom. When people approach art, they are not mainly picking out artists who they're, they're asking the question, does this artist believe the things I believe? That's not how most people approach art. I know for Christians, we often do. We go, I want to have a Christian version of this. Most people, it's not, the, the, the key point isn't, is this art, does this artist cross all my T's and dot all my I's? The question for most people is, does this artist understand what it feels like to be me? Does this artist understand what it's like to be a human being and understand what the world is like? I think, think of this. Think of the classics of literature, for example. Uh, Shakespeare, Dickens, Jane Austen. Just, just a few that would be, I'm sure we'd all have some reference points there. Why is it that those authors are still so popular and respected? Well, surely what it is, at the heart of it, is because their work still rings true to us today about our human experience, isn't it? You really think, these people wrote hundreds of years ago, and it's... It's just like it's just like life now, isn't it? So, uh, as you like it, recently Shakespeare playing the, you know, the bit with the seven stages. But man, life is a stage, and everyone an actor. You, who are the arty people here? Someone, someone must have heard that. Yeah, okay. Uh, and you, you just watch, you think, wow, that's remarkable. That's still that was years ago. This is like a different world, you know. They didn't have Netflix in those days, okay? But they still kind of got something here. And there's a wisdom about those people that transcends time and space. And they give the feeling they, they kind of understand what it's like to be a human and to live in the world. There's a wisdom about them. Art that endures and art that connects and art that has a power communicates the artist's wisdom and people are drawn to artists who they feel are wise. I think this explains two uh, fact features of powerful art that have often been noticed. And one would be uh, that art, that powerful art, is better at asking questions than it is at giving answers. Powerful art is better at asking questions than at giving answers. And that's why I think partly why a project like my friend did is in some ways misguided because that's not really what art does. Do you know what we call art that gives lots of answers? Don't call it art. We call it at best advertising and at worst propaganda. That's what we call those things. If you see someone else doing it, that's what you call it. Okay, we call it evangelism <laughs> when Christians do it, okay? But it is kind of those things. It's better at asking questions than giving answers. And why is that? Well, it's because actually people have this feeling, and I think obviously we know this can be pushed too far, but that actually life contains deep mysteries and we can't understand everything. And that is true, like even for us as Christians. There's mysteries. The Bible is very clear on that. Link with that, that the best art refuses to tidy up all its loose ends and neatly package all the answers it gives at the very best. It just, it just doesn't do that. It doesn't resolve everything neatly. Dorothy Sayers, a uh, great Christian uh, novelist, uh, associate of C.S. Lewis, she, she warned artists against the problem-solution approach to art. You select, put up a problem and you solve the problem. Rub your hands with it. Okay? You might have, at the end of something like that, you, you might have some sense of satisfaction, but it's a diversion. There's no emotional impact to it because we understand deep down that life doesn't tie up all its loose ends and neatly package its answers. So if you've ever been to uh, uh, an, an art gallery and it's kind of, in any sense, modern art, however you'll describe that, I mean, I'm even talking kind of cubism or kind of Picasso, not even the really weird stuff like Tracy Emin's bed or something like that, and you're left just scratching your head going, oh, what, what did he mean? Do you know that's what they intended you to do? That wasn't a mistake. That wasn't like, oh, no, we failed. They're looking to raise questions in you. Think of the uh, really popular TV series of, of recent years. I don't know if anyone's... Have you saw True Detective at any point? 
Okay, True Detective is on third season now. Uh, what that thrived on was totally morally ambiguous characters. Breaking Bad would be better. Hands up, Breaking Bad. Notice, totally morally ambiguous characters. People were drawn in because there was a complexity there. They saw, yes, because that's how life is. Gray areas exist in life, and, and that was there. Music. Mumford and Sons, often uh, kind of one of the secular bands that you let your youth group listen to. But Mumford and Sons, they, they had all the Christian words, but they lived in doubt. And they, I haven't heard the latest album, but they live in the doubt. They didn't resolve that. They were like, no, I'm, I'm doubting. And people were drawn to them because they said, no, yeah, doubt is something that I live with too. Stormzy, again, I'm sure many of you have heard of him and probably played Blinded by Your Grace or something like that. But the thing about Stormzy that really caught people, if you had a whole album of Blinded by Your Grace, you, well, we would have probably heard of Stormzy, okay? Nobody else would have heard of Stormzy. What wins people to Stormzy is the contradiction. It's gang signs and prayer. It's if you listen to, you play Blinded by Your Grace, it's really funny, and you go, oh, listen to this, and you go, hey, kids, Stormzy, yeah, you just want to watch out. It's what radio edits are made for, I, th I think. Um, but let's consider this the other way around then. If an artist's work then is, is not, does not take account of this, if, it, if the whole body of an artist's work, whatever genre it's in, is always neat, tidy, problem-solving works that gives you simple answers, I think what you do is you come away thinking, I don't think this person understands life. Life's not like that, so they don't understand life. They don't understand what it is to be a human being. Let's move that on another step. Let's imagine that an entire community only produced work, or seemed to only produce work that didn't understand this, that was giving solutions to problems, tidy answers, giving answers and not really asking questions or answering very quickly the questions that they asked. I think you would imagine that community lacked wisdom and that the worldview behind that community was faulty because they don't understand what it's like to be a human being. I fear that evangelical Christianity's artistic output has had this effect and is having this effect across the board. Again, I just want to push you, and please feel free to push back. I'll give you a list. Our books end neatly with all prayers answered and people becoming Christians. It's the Christian publishing industry. Our films present cardboard cutouts of humans that act in entirely unrealistic ways. Our music is constantly cheery and optimistic. Our visual art consists of a kind of beauty, I suppose. You, we all know the symbols, don't we? The doves and the rainbows and the lions and the, the rivers and stuff. Uh, but they seem to be a method of hiding from the harsh realities of life rather than hitting them head on. We have at the center of our belief a cross. That's not some kitsch. That's not some up in the sky, over-realized eschatology. Now that's the wonder and beauty of God in the most graphically painful image. That should be the source of real art that brings heaven to earth, that understands our situation. How much is our art cruciform in that sort of way, uh, would we say? So art shows an artist's wisdom or lack of wisdom. Secondly, I think the other thing art does, art does share a message, it, it does. But it shows an artist's wisdom or lack of wisdom. But also art exposes the whole of an artist's life. Got to understand this with our guys. Okay, many people would say we say of anyone in different work, they throw themselves into their work. We know that expression, don't we? For artists, that is literally true a lot of the time. They, they throw themselves into their work. That's why you wonder when, when you're a bit critical of that. Well, oh, it's not so good. Or you, you ask an artist to do your Easter service, an, an actor, a playwright, say, and, and then you start tinkering with it. Has anyone ever tried that before? You, you get them doing, oh, could, could we have that? And that bit, I don't really understand that. Can we change it? And they are mortified. They just, and you never see them again. I'm being completely honest. I know a number of people who have been really like upset by Christmas plays they've been asked to do at their church because... They, they put their soul in, they put their whole into it, and then it's like, no, no, we didn't want art, we wanted propaganda, and so we want this and this, and it crushes them, it destroys them. I mean, we've seen this, this whole link between um, art and the artist in the whole, on the back of the Me Too movement, I think negatively, um, in the number of artists who have just been blacklisted, like Kevin Spacey, uh, Bill Cosby, more recently R. Kelly, and you, you see, it wasn't necessarily their work was exploring their flaws. It was the feeling that there is such a connection between an artist and their work 
that to enjoy their work when their lives are so morally flawed would be sharing in their crimes. We, we, we see that, don't we? So there's a link. The, artist, the, the artistry is an extension of the artist. But it's not ne necessarily negative. Uh, it's just, I think, how art works, uh, as I've mentioned. In their, art, in their work, artists will often put their whole lives on display. It involves their hopes. We like seeing their hopes and their joys, but it involves their fears. It involves their insecurities. It involves their failings. So I, I think I, I could give examples, but I, I think we'll see this. If, if you're into literature and you like a, like a particular author, don't you feel sometimes when you read a number of their books that you get to know them? You, I think I know that, but I know how they tick, even though they're talking on a diverse range of things. If you're into music, particularly the songwriter or the singer, you kind of think, if they came round for dinner, <laughs> I often do this, I'm just a bit silly, but if they come round for dinner, I think we could have a good chat. I, I know where they're coming from on this. I might not agree with them, but I know them. Because you see, the art reveals and exposes the artist's life. So art communicates more than a message. It usually communicates an artist's wisdom, or lack of it, actually, and it reveals their whole life uh, to the audience. But notice, notice though, some of you are kind of thinking, hmm, hmm, not sure about this. I, I put this on. Is that not, how does that work and all this? But I just want to note something. What I've just said does not lessen the importance of art to us as Christians. I think it increases the importance of art to us as Christians. Because just think back to what we've been hearing from Jonathan and, and throughout the day on how, how this stuff works. Because the gospel isn't just a message. It's not. And instantly people come back and go, well, yeah, but it is, isn't it? Yes, of course it is. We speak a message. Of course we do. But it's not just a message. The good news of Jesus is a message that is evidenced by lives, whole lives, that have been transformed from the inside out and that flow out with the wisdom and love of Jesus. And therefore, if art does those things I've claimed, it is a perfect way to present the gospel in ways that most of us would never get a chance to do. Let's just break that down slightly before we finish. If, you think, if we think that art expresses our wisdom or lack of wisdom, we've got absolutely nothing to fear from this. Paul's very clear in Colossians 2.3. In Christ are hidden all the riches of wisdom and knowledge. I love that verse. In Christ are hidden all the riches of wisdom and knowledge. We don't just get in the gospel forgiveness and a new way to live. We receive access to the truest, most full human being who can tell us most clearly and most truthfully who we are and what the world is like. We don't have a shallow surface understanding of the world as Christians. We have all the riches of wisdom and knowledge that are found in Jesus. And as churches, I'd love it if we can, I'm not saying that you should do it, I'd, try, I'd love to try to do this, of releasing artists to be able to actually just show that to people, to be able to show the world that stuff. My challenge to us would be to help our artists to let the wisdom of Jesus seep out into their work. And that would mean very practically, Seeing value in the artist's work in our churches when it's not just about Christian practices or religious themes, but about every area of life. It sometimes, I think, will mean encouraging our artists away, which might sound completely ridiculous, but away from making utilitarian, functional, evangelistic work. And putting that on a pedestal, that's what we often do. That's really important, that thing there, they did. The, the worship album that came out in the church, you should buy this, but the guy who's playing the pubs and doing a really good job on the local music, scene, yeah, he's doing that. One day he'll grow up and be a, music, be a worship leader, you know? That sort of thing. We need to kind of not make those distinctions. Also, if art actually reveals our whole lives, we know this stuff. That's great. Jesus would have, would have been thinking, yes, of course, and is thinking, of course. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. Most of us could, I'm sure, um, recite it without me helping you. This is what it says. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We're called to share the good news both in word but also through our lives that have been shaped by Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. And because of the nature of art, artists have an opportunity to shine their light from a very different type of platform as they put themselves honestly on display through their work. Yes, there are challenges here, because they put up the flaws as well as the successes. And we have to help them with that. But the help isn't just saying, get rid of the flaws, just put the successes. Because that 
stops the light from shining. That's hiding it under a bowl in many ways. I think there's a naturalness and a permission here. My advice to artists would be summed up in the quote that's often attributed to St. Augustine, if you know it. I don't know if I'd, I'd give this to everyone in every situation, but I think it works for artists of love God and do what you will. You want to you wanna paint flowers for your whole career? You know, do what you will. That's fine. You want to write a song about politics? You know, knock yourself out. Absolutely fine. You want to write a silly series of poems about farmyard animals? Do it. Absolutely fine. And if you do those things loving Jesus, those things are as valuable as things that are on religious themes. Because actually, to a culture that has rejected Christianity and is very sensitive to being advertised to, particularly by what we're doing, but on the other side is still very much on the lookout for some help on how to live rounded, wise, fully human and flourishing lives, that kind of art about all of life, even some strange niche things, if it's done loving God, can be even more powerful than our focused evangelistic work. Now, I'll con conclude with a confession uh, I made just to encourage us and leave us here. Um, I remember when we started Sputnik, I used to make uh, this claim. I used to say it was, it was the, the high point in my, my talk was like, uh, Christians have always been good at art. Think of Johann Sebastian Bach and C.S. Lewis and J.R. Tolkien. And I'd pause and I'd say, but what do they all have in common? They're all dead. And everyone would laugh in a slightly morbid way. I don't know why they laughed at that one. Um, but actually, someone came back to me and said, no, that's incorrect. There are lots of Christians still involved high up in the arts. And I, I, I took that on the chin. I, as I looked more, you know, actually, you're, you're correct. And I, I've switched that slightly. And I think, having reflected on it, I think there's a different diagnosis, but it lands more on us, actually. There are, if you go to any art scene in any city, I think you will find lots of people who profess to be Christians. I think if you look Wikipedia, the famous artists out there, you'll find lots of them who actually say, yeah, I'm a Christian. What you don't find is you do not find hardly any who are enthusiastic, committed members of local churches. And we know if you're not with the body, it is very difficult to shine on your own. And my challenge and encouragement to you, starting a conversation, not finishing it, is how can we take this wonderful opportunity, this God-given thing of artistry, and how can we help our people to shine in this wonderful way that it's, it lets the gospel out of it, but it also speaks more widely than others, uh, than we could speak to, to people who are never going to come into our churches naturally. So there's a bit of provocation. Um, I hope that kept you awake for the last session at least. But if you want to see examples of how to do that, the list on the, um, on the sheet should help you, I think. Can we close in prayer? I suppose I have to uh, pass on to someone else. Lord, Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for today. Thank you for just reminding us again and again what's putting the most important thing in the middle, Lord, and it's your gospel. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. Thank you, Jesus, for rising from the dead for us. Thank you for releasing your spirit to us. Lord, thank you that you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Lord, thank you for wisdom for us. So we've heard some, so many people's experience and journeys with you today and reflections on your word. We pray, uh, keep us as we go, bless us and help us to put this in, uh, into practice in ways that will glorify the name of your son, Father God. Amen. Amen.